Hey guys, and welcome to Pop Culture on YouTube. If you'd like to catch our last episode, episode 89, where we discussed Robocop and Starship Troopers, it is available exclusively on our podcasts. You can listen to it at pretty much anywhere good podcasts are found. Now, moving on with today's episode, which is Attack the Block. <laughs> everybody right, to pop culture <laughs> <laughs> welcome everybody to pop culture i am scott i'm jason and i'm monica in this episode we're talking about attack the block <laughs> monica's uh cult classic offering uh this week it is a phenomenal film yeah what a debut for um joe cornish like wow <laughs> It's great. <laughs> Just a shame he has not been able to replicate the success. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, yeah, what a what a I, I just remember seeing the the uh, trailer for it around when it was coming out. It was hitting all the like weird, wonderful sci-fi film festivals, and and I'm like, oh, it's it's and there was seemed to be this big push that like, oh, Edgar Wright produced it, and I'm like, oh, okay, he didn't direct it, but okay. <laughs> Nick Frost is in it. Oh yeah, <laughs> and um, it certainly, I think, has a kind of flavour, but is uh, certainly not not that movie <laughs> that they were no. kind of touting it as. No, it's something that's um, something very different. It's I think it's a really good science fiction movie. It's also a movie that I feel portrays London in a very realistic and honest way. Um, for me, whenever I look at, you know, movies set in London, they're either about, you know, upper middle class regency or you have these hyper gangster types, whereas this is a very nice medium and very realistic of what it's they're like. They're going to be like the, yeah, the Cockney gangsters, the Aristos. Yeah, exactly right. Well, this is, you know, modern day South London set in a very realistic world. I just, I just find it honest. Oh, and so I yeah. guess for the Australian listeners, it's the Housing Commission of London. It's... Yes. And uh, happened to get impeded by aliens. Yeah, that's right. And it's up to John Boyega to stop him. <laughs> Moses. Mr. Moses. Moses. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I guess I'll start off by saying um, this film is just really very well paced. Um, I love the breakneck speed this movie goes at, and it just doesn't stop from we have the initial conflict between this gang of, you know, teenagers mugging poor Jodie Whittaker, who is a nurse, to suddenly aliens crash and they're after this gang and they go towards the housing estate and everything takes place inside the building. It's fantastic. The 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 t block. Yes, the, the <laughs> Wyndham Tower or the, the block. The 10th the character in the film. <laughs> <laughs> Compelling performance by the tower. <laughs> yes, oh, outstanding. <laughs> um, and they meet a whole bunch of weirdos along the way, <laughs> mm. from like rival gangs to Nick Frost's uh, armed up drug dealer, <laughs> the weed keeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a fun movie. It's such a fun movie. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it it ultimately comes down to the sort of real feeling of that world and it's created a, a a community i think that as you mentioned before is realistic it, it is authentic and even the fact that you know we're saying they're in a more downtrodden part of society they're they're also their own enemies in lots of ways and um it's brought to bear on each other and reflected to each other of it, the hopelessness isn't entirely just because of where they are it's also what their actions are as well that leads to it so um mm -hmm. that's it, it's what makes it sort of rise above being just another sort of alien film if you want mm -hmm. and uh, uh, them, them versus them yeah uh and i think it's especially important because the one thing for me in the film that it's just a bit jarring is the actual aliens um blacker than black I, I, yeah yeah I, well i don't mind that concept of it being blacker than black sort of idea and the the teeth 
being sort of fluorescent and whatnot. It's just the overall look of them looks like some weird stilts person. I don't know. It, it just it doesn't. <laughs> the, the it's shaggy not convincing. <laughs> yeah, it, it it it's weirdly unconvincing when the first alien that you come across is quite convincing, and so you get the baby. Just, well, the female. I thought it was. It was the female. That oh, was the yeah. female. Yeah. Yes, female, yeah, because yeah. of the pheromones, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I I love the concept of the design, but they just they almost cartoonish and Scott's background sort of really pushes that for me because he's got like a cartoon version of it. If um, you cut to me. Yeah. <laughs> camera direction. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> um, yeah, it... it other, well, other than that, and I, 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 I'm too. forgiving of it ultimately. It's just one of those things that sort of, if if it didn't have that authenticity of uh, characters and situations in it, I think I would have really sort of gone, oh, this is really B grade, like low B grade. Mm. Um, and thankfully, it rises up above it. Yeah. I, I it's not a, it's not really a comedy either. So it, no, yeah. it's got funny bits, but it's not. Yeah. It's, it's not, not like half a minute, yeah. no. But um, I, I appreciate what you're saying. I don't know why I find them very striking. I really like them. I, I do too. I love the creature design. It's actually um, the the two initial aliens that you see are actually um, stop them in gorilla suits. Yeah. That's, <laughs> mm. that's, that's, like not, that's not a joke. It's, that's, mm. that's just what they use. And that maybe that's it. Maybe that's the problem because I can see that. Because mm. um, for me, it comes across almost Muppetish. So maybe yeah, that's why I like it so much. Yeah, I think that's why I like it so <laughs> much. Now you know. Now it's, we sort know. Of, yeah. it's sort of like what happened if um, Animal the Muppet became a goth and went to space and, <laughs> and, stuff. and started slitting throats. Yeah, and his teeth now glow. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I, I really, I, I visually, I just find them really cool to look at. Like, I just, I really like them. I like the first initial... Um, frame where you see the alien for the first time it's sort of like this van to black and you think the glow in the dark bits are actually the eyes but then it opens its jaw and it's like oh no it's actually <laughs> it's <the> teeth, teeth. <laughs> and i thought oh what a what a clever way to subvert that to the audience and they're just kind of these weird animals really there's no sort of um you know logical intelligence behind them they're just kind of uh, yeah space apes i don't know <laughs> it, it for me it's sort of um reminds me somewhat of um a really grotesque um a bit of a stylized version of a werewolf in a way just like with all the shaggy fur the sharp teeth going on all fours and chasing things around um i just for some reason had that throwback to a space werewolf <laughs> this is when the critters take steroids <laughs> all that yes <laughs> um no i yeah i i i actually really really like the creature design mm. Yeah. I appreciate what you're saying, though. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And um, that's probably one of the constraints when it comes to having a low-budget yeah, budget, cult film. So, yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, given the constraints that it had, the rest of it and how that's all pulled off is outstanding. So uh, I, it, it's not a major criticism. It's just one of those things where mm. it, it jarred me out of it a little bit. But um, I really loved how it all came together into uh the den you know where they're holding or the lock room holding yeah. the drugs and things is their safest place and um they're not knowing that they're just leading them to it yeah, <laughs> yeah. um and uh, nick frost is great in the role he sort of suits that character perfectly you know it's um yeah he really does everyone's very likable in this movie like even like the teenage kids who sometimes you know children in films can be a little bit grating to watch but i thought everyone did extremely well in the movie and john boyega in particular you know when you find out when jody whittaker's character asks him how old he is and he says 15 you're shocked by yeah the life experience that this 15 year old is going well, through. He, and how he also he carry, is. carries it with quite a maturity. And I think it, I think yeah. what really sells it is like when you first meet these kids, they're quite threatening and you can really picture yourself in a situation getting mugged by a group of kids who maybe don't understand right from wrong because they're in a position where they don't have to. Um, yeah, exactly they can be right. Quite, quite scary. And, 
And they're also within a system where the police are going to punish them either way for whatever they do. Yeah. So it hardly matters what they do is good or bad because they're still going to be questioned by the police, arrested by the police, blamed for things by the police. So it's a little bit defeatist in that way. But then again, that's probably a reality for people in those sorts of situations. Yeah, it's part of that um, uh, unfortunate cultural um, building that they lived in, like 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 the building blocks of, of that sort of like element of society. It does. It has a very Im- interesting commentary about um, that part of London, that sort of age group that lives in London, and um, also, I guess, around housing estates um, in particular. Um, a few years ago, there was an incident with um, one of the buildings um, catching on fire or something like that in Greenfield Tower and everyone lauded it as such a tragedy because it happened, you know, it happened to this housing commission. But it was a problem that was flagged for many, many years before. And there's other buildings with that same fault in it that hasn't been fixed. So yeah. it's sort but of yeah. They're the poor people and we're busy. Exactly right. Yeah. And that's really difficult to come to terms with. <laughs> Yeah, it because sucks. It, it, it really it's sucks. Something, it's something that's, you know, based in reality and it, it's something that happens and it's infuriating. Mm. And I think with this film, it, it sort of takes these, you know, these kids who are living in this situation where initially you're kind of fearful of them, I guess, from Judy Whittaker's character's perspective. But they become mm. the heroes of the movie. It gives them their, <laughs> their chance to fight aliens. And Moses is a very compelling hero. He is, yeah. And, you know, by the end of it, when he's running through with two samurai swords and, you know, he's just, <laughs> you know, trying to break out of that um, locked storeroom. Yeah, it's fantastic. Silence on the Western <laughs> Front. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, the, the thing is, it's it, it sort of, it works in its simplicity by the place, as you said, the, the block itself mm. is a character with little windows into the various people that are living there. And yeah. um, the relationships between them is really quite well done. Uh, like even between the boys and the girls, like the yeah. sister and the way they ring and they're just sort of like, going, oh, what's he, I don't understand what he's saying. And <laughs> just throws the phone aside to someone else. And, um, it it just smacks of this uh, authenticity that's really not seen a lot in something like a budget film like this, I guess, because the, all the actors have obviously really put their heart into e- each and every character and the direction obviously led to this really well-crafted scenario of this block of these people, of this community. And... Um, that's the main thing that I get out of the film when I see it. Uh, there, there are moments that are sort of Edgar Wrightish, I think, in because you were mentioning how it was produced, and uh, I think it's a lot to do with Nick Frost sitting there, where it cuts to them holding their breath and then letting it out as <laughs> they've been smoking the cones. So um, mm. things like that occur, which smacks of that, but. Um, it's really well crafted and considering that's a budget film. Mm. I'd like to say as well, um, uh, the level of tension is quite palpable throughout. Like it, it, sometimes mm. you feel genuinely like these kids are dead. <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Not out of this. Well, no well they do die. That's yeah. the thing. I think that's, that's what makes it still shocking and more a horror film. And that's why I said it's not really a comedy. So it's not, a B grade horror film, it's sort of some well mix between of those sorts of things. And um, yeah, the, you, you care for them when they die. Mm. Yeah, particularly, I felt bad for poor Jerome, the um, boy with the glasses, um, who was just, I found him so jovial and so funny. Um, he was my <laughs> favorite of the little group. And then he died, and I was like, oh no, not Jerome. <laughs> <laughs> poor guy. You gotta, you gotta kill the funny one. You've got you to. have to kill the funny <laughs> one. That's unfortunate. You have to, you have to silence humor. I know. <laughs> it's censorship gone mad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, a really good choice. And it's certainly um, taken on this sort of little cult status. And that we talked about that's getting a sequel. Um, there were yeah. certainly comic books and things based on it as well. 
I'll be interested to see how the story's expanded in Attack the Block 2 and where they're going to go with it. I thought it was a very complete kind of story. Yeah, Attack the Sub. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, I feel like, yeah, it's not a movie I'm begging for a second one. No, but I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm curious to see what Joe Cornish does with it because the kid who would be king didn't work out. No, sadly <laughs> not. <laughs> that movie made me so angry. <laughs> oh, my so kids liked it. Happy for them. <laughs> are you? Are you? I, still think, rage. I think I was. I think maybe I was actually excited for it because it got to trailer well and it got good reviews. And then I'm like, this is not for me. Mm. Clearly, this is not for me. Mm. I just want Tin Tin Two. Okay. Yeah, I want Tintin too as well, actually. What's that got to do with it? How's that? He wrote fit? he wrote the first Tintin. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> just that fit in. Look, I'm just venting, all right? It, does that mean he's waiting for Peter Jackson to maybe go, isn't oh, everyone yeah, waiting for time. Peter Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new a new thing, a new saying, waiting for Peter Jackson. All right. <laughs> Waiting for Peter Jackson. Hmm. I waited, and all I got was the Hobbit. Yeah, that's something that happened, isn't it? <gasps> That'd be a good double feature. What's that? We we one week we review Lord of the Rings, and then we review the Hobbit. <laughs> <laughs> We're not here to talk about Peter Jackson. Let's talk about Attack of the Bull. No. Um, look, it, 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 really good film. I honestly. Check it out if you can. I'm sure it's um, floating around on one of the uh, yeah. streaming services. Yeah, I it is. Can't yes. remember which I've one got, it was. I've got yeah, one of them. Right. I've got one of them fancy Blu-rays of it, but it's um, available on stand for those interested. Give it a uh, go. There you go. Thanks, Monica. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for being professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> um, yeah, no, check it out. It's it's a, it's a fun movie and it's a, a well deserved classic. Mm. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of Pop Culture. I've been Scott. I'm still Jason. And I'm still Monica.